Yo, what's up YouTube? I have a very special and I guess slightly irrelevant video today, but hey, it's gonna be fun. So I have two special guests with me today. Or really just one special guest and one phone that I use every day. I am doing a speed test between the magical and beautiful iPhone 4 and the new iPhone XS. I know, we all know who the winner is going to be, and this iPhone is running the latest version that it could support, which was like 7.1 something other numbers. And yes, I know that the iPhone 4 is going to be slow, I'm going to do this speed test with iOS 7, and then I believe that Apple is now letting you put these iPhones back on older versions of iOS, so then I'm going to put this on an older version of iOS and redo the test. So, let's have some fun! Alright, so up first is going to be the boot test. So, these are both powered off. Three, two, one. Apple logo appears first on the 4. Come on iPhone 4, you can beat the XS at something. Now this, the iPhone 4, was Apple's last for, uh, one core CPU. Oh, well, okay, never mind then. The iPhone 4 is Apple's last single core CPU. The iPhone XS, I believe, was a hectocore processor, which means it has six cores iPhone 4 is still booting up, and the iPhone XS is well beyond that. And there it is. So yes, the iPhone 4 is sluggish. I know this. I know that the iPhone XS is going to beat it in just about everything, and that there's a lot of apps that don't even work on the iPhone 4 anymore. But this is still just seeing how far we've come. Anyway, let's start with a nice and simple app, the phone. Three, two, one. Definitely first on the 10s. All right, let's go into messages. Three, two, one. Definitely first on the 10s. And next, next will be the clock. In three, two, one. Still faster on the 10s. Now let's go over to FaceTime. In 3, 2, 1. 10s again. Alright, time for the camera. Come on, you got this iPhone 4. 3, 2, and 1. Um. I don't know if that's just because it's black and I can't see it, but I feel like the iPhone 4 was at least tied with the XS on that one, which is nice. All right, now let's go for notes. In three, two, and one. iPhone XS. And now reminders. Three, two, one, tennis. All right, now let's go for the calendar in three, two, and one. All right, that was the tennis, but it was the iPhone 4 was not that far behind that time. And photos, three, two, one, iPhone tennis. Now let's see how fast the settings app launches in three, two, one. Again, the iPhone 4 was not that far behind, honestly. Uh, what about the weather? The weather always changes. Three, two, one. Tennis. Man, 
that weather is making me so salty. Yesterday it was nice, 70 some degrees, and it was so nice I left my window open. And then, then I wake up to it being 35 degrees in my room. Alright, now let's go to Safari. Three, two, and one. Um, I don't think that there was that much of a difference. Now let's try loading um, Apple.com. Oh my, that was much faster on the 10s. And they're both connected to the exact same Wi-Fi network. So Wi-Fi is definitely something that's improved with the 10s. All right, um, what about the App Store? Everybody needs apps. Three, two, and one. iPhone XS with the iPhone 4 still loading the apps. All right, next up is the iTunes Store in three, two, one. Definitely first on the XS. All right, I think that wraps it up for our first party apps. Now let's do a few third party apps that I did find worked with the iPhone 4. So let's start with Spotify in three, two, one. Tennis is first, iPhone 4 is still loading. And still loading. But Spotify does work on the 4S. You can still listen to music, which is nice. Now let's go over to Instagram in three, two, one. First on the 10s. And warning, the iPhone 4, while you can like pictures and you can view pictures, you can edit your profile, you can post. Uh, direct messages does not work. So, now you know. And now let's go for Facebook. In three, two, one. Tennis. Again. But the four still loading. Facebook also works on the four. As you can see, you can look at pictures, posts, you can get annoying pop-ups, fun stuff. All right, what about Facebook Messenger? Three, two, one. First on the 10s. the iPhone 4 is still loading and begging me to turn on notifications. But it does load and it does work. I have sent a picture and I have sent messages on it. So I do know for a fact that it works. All right, now everybody's favorite app, YouTube, in three, two, and one. First on the uh, 10s. Still loading on the 4. And again, I tested this and I know that it works on the 4. You can watch videos. It takes a little bit to load the videos, so I guess that has something to do with the Wi-Fi being slower on it, but it does work. And let's try Twitter in three, two, and one. Now Twitter, I'm not sure if it's full functionality on the uh, iPhone 4, and eh, first on the 10s. But on the iPhone 4, I know that you're able to view posts and you're able to like stuff. But every time I go to view my profile, it uh, always ends up crashing. So give it a few seconds. If it doesn't crash, well, I'll be really happy. But I'm pretty sure it's going to crash like any second now. By the way, feel free to follow me on Twitter. And, yep, there it goes, it crashed. All right, so now let's close out all of these apps. 
and we can run the Antutu benchmark. I would be running a Geekbench instead, but uh, Geekbench 3 is no longer in the App Store, and that was the last version of Geekbench that was supported in uh, the iPhone 4. RIP. Alright, and 2 2 benchmark in 3, 2, and 1. Ah, I didn't push that in time. Alright, let's try that again. 3, 2, and 1. Oh my, that was much faster on the iPhone XS. Alright, so I'm just going to start the tests and uh, I'll fast forward them. So, as everyone expected, the 10s has finished first, and we are still waiting for the 4. And I'll come... Oh, and there it goes. Alright. So this is an older version of uh, Antutu benchmark. So let's see uh, where... Ah, there it is. It got a score of 8,065 versus a score of 360,206. So, those numbers seem kind of arbitrary, but I'm considering one is 8,000, the other is 360,000. Uh, 360, it would be so much nicer if we could uh, use Geekbench, but we can't. Okay, right. so, let's see, where is the processor at? Is it at the very top? And do I mean, oh, there it is. Haha. <laughs> CPU. You see the core is one core. It's at one gigahertz. Though I'm pretty sure that Apple actually throttled that to like 800 megahertz. And did I miss the processor on this one too? I know it's the A12, but I don't know. There it is. Okay, it doesn't, it doesn't even have it listed. So let's just find out on our own. Okay. So, I was finally able to find it. Uh, the processor, it is a hexacore processor. It has two 2.5 gigahertz cores and four 1.6 gigahertz cores. And then the Apple GPU has four cores. The two 2.5 gigahertz cores are what are used in like gaming, video editing, that kind of stuff. And the four 1.6 gigahertz cores are used for stuff like Twitter, Instagram, you know, your social media. So, there you have it. Alright guys, so, um, well, as you can see, the iPhone XS obviously crushed the iPhone 4. But that just shows you how far we have come from the iPhone 4. And once I get downgraded to, I believe, iOS 6 or 5, something like that, I'm going to redo this test and see how much it affected it. So thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Peace.